Okay, so <clears throat> we flipped the part up and we know that's a two inch part. We were on a one inch before. So I've got tool 25 in there. I'm just gonna jog down. Once I get to X or Z of one in PathPilot, that should be um, my Z zero. And remember, we're just drilling a through hole here. So I don't really care about, you know, five or 10 or 20 thousandths even of, of, of it being off. It just doesn't matter. So we'll, uh, I'm at a little over one there. We'll hit Z zero. And all this is set up in the tool changer here. So we hit cycle start. We ought to be able to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Um, keep playing around this GoPro. I've got it now pretty close to the part, which might interfere when we go to cut that uh, right side hole right now. So bear with me. that tool chain. God, I love this thing. I, sorry, I thought that was in the tool changer as well. I'm realizing that Jared changed a bunch of tools out to run parts last night on his own, which is a phenomenal outcome for why I am um, not having parts set up, drill set up like I thought they were. I will take that uh, any day. Okay, let's see if we can uh, tap a few holes here. Boom. Pretty sweet, right folks? God. Sometimes you take for granted how nice that is. All right, flip this over, three more holes and we're done with that part. Okay, I threw tool four, which is that drill that was not in the tool changer. In the tool changer, really easy. I'll do a video soon on that. Um, folks were asking for that. Uh, this should be quick and dirty, and, or quick, and um, <laughs> now finally should be all Tool changer driven. I think I know where I want the GoPro to go. I just got to decide and then I'm going to build something to mount that where I want it. Right now I've just got it on some uh, two, four, six blocks. I got them from for Christmas from my parents and they are actually, couldn't ask for a better Christmas gift. Holy smokes, love them. I think the uh, mailman here is here. I'm going to uh, let the camera keep recording and the tool changer G8 does. I'll be right back. Well, I was not there to see that, uh, but looks like it look, looks good. Uh, yeah, let's move on to the base plate. Okay, so <clears throat> remember we're back to a one inch plate, so we don't even need to use the Heimer. We can just reset our zero to one. I got tool 25 in here. I've done my sanity check and it's the rock and roll. edge on it. Mostly aesthetic. People were, uh, I don't know what it was, some folks were finding old videos, you know, a couple years old and banging on me for not deburring in the machine. And look, it is true. It's a great thing to do. This is more of a champer than a deburr. You know, the arguments against it, in my opinion, are you're taking time on an expensive machine and it doesn't always call for it. And, um, you know, the other argument, which is maybe more controversial, is there's risk. I mean, there's just risk that you're going to do in a cam operation or you're going to have some risk of a bad recipe, a tool breaking, too much tamper, you know, and usually it's the last stop you do, so sometimes I'm sort of thinking, hey, I'm not going to risk, especially if it's not important, I'm not going to risk ruining a good part just to uh, put a nice chamfer on it. Now, if it's important, absolutely, because this idea that we aren't capable of programming tool paths um, without crashes is, of course, silly. Of course we can. 
but um, I, I can't even remember if I've ever been bit. I think I did get bit once in my own fault of just programming in a bad chamfer and when it crashes at that point you're just so frustrated and so bummed um it's like oh man i got greedy anyway um i was sitting here thinking um you know one of these these are the two quarter 20s and then one will be the 38 16 and it's almost we're going to tap both of them one of them's for the camera one of them's for that support bar underneath the rail you can almost argue that the one for the camera should be a quarter inch clearance through hole because you're going to bolt the camera with a nut through the whole block but I like having the um I like having this threaded and if someone wants to use a quarter inch uh quarter 20 through bolt they can always stick it through the uh pre-816 hole that we're going to make as well so um you know that's just me not being a camera sort of thinking what makes sense a little tap in action god I love that Now it's going to pull in our 5 16th drill to pre drill for the 3 8 16 tap. And I'll show you how we're going to tap that. No secrets, just hand tap. Just hand tap it with a guide. You guys, do you guys care about the GoPro in the background? Does that bother you? Um, we're going to see what the, if the footage is any good, but I'm um, curious to see is that, you know, changes it. I guess all of us people, I'd rather not the camera, the, the GoPro be there, but. If the footage is great, maybe it's a trade-off. I'll see if I can locate it so it's uh, a good picture, but not, you know, not in the way like it is right now. Okay, so nice thing is since that was the last stop, we're gonna end up staying over our hole. I'm actually gonna click ATC store current tool. That gets rid of that tool, leaves the spindle actually draw bar open so stick that in there lock and then all I got to do my 3816 tap I'm going to put a little bit of coolant on there okay jog down the pretension that top thing and boom now if you want to tap this in the machine you absolutely can but you got to remember it takes a lot of uh, motor torque to tap something like this, even in aluminum, you wanna have a good tap, which this one is. Um, but like I said, there's more risk to it. I don't do it a ton. Um, if I did, I actually would, be, I would thread mill it. Um, the other thing is you can pre-drill with a bigger than uh, 5 16th. Depends on you know, the application and whether that's acceptable for the part of the customer. But obviously if you drill out something bigger than 5 16 it'll make it uh, a lot easier because you'll have less material to cut away and usually um, usually you get along just fine you still get plenty of um, purchase power with your fastener so that looks good we can always chase that out offline with a torque uh, I use those DeWalt's actually well, actually maybe we'll just go do that in a second uh, which is a great way the threads always it's already going to be straight so it's less risk that you get it cockeyed uh, so let's tip her up on our side and finish up Okay, flip around the side, we'll drill the two M8 tapped holes that will support those uh, sweet little wheels. And then that center hole there will be quarter 20, kind of an accessory, you know. I had this idea, maybe is silly, that you could put something in there again, just move the camera left or right by hand and not have to hold the body of the camera. And, you know, just an extra tapped hole. I don't think anybody ever complained that they wish this thing had, had fewer tapped holes. Okay, I have got to put in the tap manually because I've got two different taps. Well, let's just say there's going to be some blooper reel footage. I actually didn't break the tap, but uh, that did not go as planned. Anyways, uh, we're going to chase that 3 six, uh, three eighths by 16 tap out. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to use this Irwin tap adapter that you see right here that uses them on my 12 volt or 18 volt DeWalt and these things are both these tools I mean seriously go buy these there's links in the video description but seriously these are incredible and what that will let us do is take that existing tapped hole
Sorry, I didn't have that thing tightened down, but should, should have backed out much more easily than that. Anyways, I use this thing all the time for chasing things out. I actually want to use it to build one of those um, 90 degree tables, but uh, that's a whole nother, what do they call them? Um, steady arms or something, that's a whole nother project. Anyways, let's uh, put this thing together and see how she looks. All right, threw it all together, which was quite simple. Literally just the four screws to anchor in your pipe. And then I put just lay the roller on top of here. We do use some of these rubber, uh, or I think a nylon, sorry, plastic washers to space off the wheels to let them track naturally in the pipe. And you can see I threw my bar underneath there, but you, know, you guys tell me, I'm no camera expert. And hey, look, this isn't gonna be the Rolls Royce of these things. Um, I know I know smoothness matters and, and low friction, all that for, for film guys, but I think that's actually pretty darn nice. Um, I'll be curious to see what you, again, audio and video guys um, think. And then you can see, I actually really do like this little, um, obviously you can put it on the other side as well, to sort of use to, to, to pull along here. Um, and then I like the fact that, again, let's say you've got this whole thing on two, each end on a tripod and someone bumps it, well, you're not gonna, your camera isn't gonna just fall off. Something might go haywire, but it's not gonna take the complete plunge. Um, yeah, what else? I mean, you got, see, you can see it's pretty, Low friction, it won't quite make it all the way to the end with a good push. The pipe, actually, frankly, the pipe could probably be, excuse me, the pipe could probably be cleaned up a little bit. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. Let's take a real quick uh, test footage shot here. Won't be too cinema cinematic, so forgive me. I wanted to mention too, unrelated to this project, but Tormach is putting on a lathe workshop. You can see the info here. There's a link in the video description to the page. It should be a pretty cool event. They're going to, it's a chance to see the lathe. You got to do have to go uh, in person to the Tormach uh, headquarters in Wisconsin, but um, they're going to have experts there talking about work holding, tool holding, cutting, the lathe, turret, gang, tool posts. Uh, it's a free event. I think they're throwing out a lunch too, and it should be a good event. I'm going to go. So if you want to see the lathe and you want to hang out, uh, come with me to the uh, Tormach lathe event in May. What do you guys think? Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, the first thing I thought was I want more travel, but that's the beauty of it. You just go pick up longer pipe, um, or you may be able to find some, or you may have some, and it doesn't have to be this exact type. Um, so I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you buy the kit from us, um, again, really, I encourage you to make it. Uh, it'd be a super fun project. If you do buy it from us, what we'll do is we'll throw in these little fasteners, which make it real nice for quick assembly and teardown and we'll include the washers and fasteners. So all you really need to do is get pipe and the wheels, and you know you should have a couple quarter 20 type fasteners for your camera on, on hand. We'll include the, the bottom plate here as well to keep it stable. So uh, if you wanna go that route, hopefully it's sort of a turnkey or more of a turnkey type operation. But uh, as always folks, I appreciate you guys watching, sharing, enthusiasm, the likes, the thumbs up, the comments, the shares. I am so freaking excited for this open house at the end of March. It is crazy how many people are coming now. Um, so yeah, take care. I will see you soon, folks.